Hello, and thank you for joining our Middle East webinar. My name is Woodrow Arrington, and I'm a senior product manager on the Amazon CloudFront team. I'm also joined with me by Robert Breckenridge, a business development manager on Edge Services. Now, today we're going to be talking about Amazon Web Services and a few of the products within the content delivery and security product offerings. And these are going to be services such as Amazon CloudFront, Shield, and WAF. Now, this webinar is meant to be a high-level introductory overview of what these services offer and how they can benefit your web or mobile application. So to begin, we're specifically hosting this regional webinar because of two recent announcements CloudFront made within the region. We'd like to draw awareness to two new CloudFront Edge locations that are now live within the United Arab Emirates. And these Edge locations are found in Dubai and Fujairah. What this means is that CloudFront is now connected to all the major internet networks within the United Arab Emirates. And we're continuing to add more transit and peering links to the regional internet service providers within the region for greater impact as well. Now what does this do is it brings many of the benefits of AWS even closer to your end viewers within the region. And what we're really excited about with these regional launches is the impact it is having on reducing latency within the country and within the region as a whole. If I take a look at specifically what's happening within the latency among the United Arab Emirates, before we first launched the Edge location in September, we were seeing P50 or average latency at 100 milliseconds or more. By the time that we've now launched both Edge locations in Dubai and Fujairah, we've quickly seen that P50 average latency dramatically reduce from being 100 milliseconds down to approximately 15 milliseconds. Now, this 85% reduction in latency is notable as it shaves off hundreds of milliseconds or even seconds when it comes to conducting that full TLS handshake when the client is requesting content from the server and for that origin server to provide the response back to the viewer. Now, this is important because there are several studies on the internet that talk about that importance of latency and how crucial it is to eliminate it wherever possible. It's been shown and studied that any reduction in latency can improve the viewer experience, which is obvious, but it can also improve the retention or the closure of important metrics that you're uh, measuring, such as a sales conversion or maybe some type of sign-up. But at its base, we all know that more responsive web pages or mobile applications are always better for viewer satisfaction and a higher likelihood to return for future engagement. Now, in addition to the launches within the United Arab Emirates, we've been busy around the world. Now, the, one of the best things about CloudFront, in my opinion, is that it is a living and growing global network. In the past 12 months, we've launched roughly 35 edge locations, which is about a 33% increase in network size. And we're continuing to add more and more edge locations around the world, both as new network expansions and also as incremental capacity launches. And we're happy to announce that some of these other new countries that have recently launched include uh, uh, United Arab Emirates, which we're talking about today, but also just a little bit ago, uh, new edge locations in South Africa as well for Cape Town and Johannesburg. The latency reduction in South Africa was approximately a 75% reduction. Latency reductions in Copenhagen and Oslo were both about a 35% reduction in average latency. And then latency reductions in uh, Perth earlier this year was about a 50% reduction. Now, as I mentioned, we continue to grow the size of our network as we continue to grow and as we see more and more demand around the world. And this is where incremental capacity launches come into play as well. And we just launched additional edge locations in India as well. So what that does is it brings the total number of edge locations to over 130. And as I mentioned, we're not done growing and we have many more exciting new edge locations coming up in the next few months. But what I want to draw attention to is as we look closer at this network map is the regional edge caches, which are denoted by the larger orange dot around the world. There are 11 of these regional edge caches, and what this is is a free mid-tier cache that sits in between your CloudFront edge location that your viewers are using and your origin server, wherever that might be located. What this does is it continues to enhance CloudFront's ability to cache content closer to your viewers, wherever they may be, 
but also reduces the load that is on your origin servers. It acts as an additional layer of origin shielding um, that enhances the performance of your web applications or mobile applications at the same time. What it does is it eliminates the need for every CloudFront Edge location to talk directly to your origin um, as they will first go check the regional Edge cache to see if the content is there before requesting the content from your origin. Now I'm going to go now jump into a little bit more of Edge services as a whole and a little bit deeper into CloudFront as a service itself. Now today we're going to be talking about Edge services um, more than just CloudFront. Uh, Edge Services is a portfolio of products provided by Amazon Web Services. It does include Amazon CloudFront, AWS Lambda at Edge, AWS Shield and Shield Advanced, AWS WAF, and Amazon Route 53. Now, we're not going to be covering every one of these services today. As I mentioned, we're going to specifically talk more about the CloudFront, Shield, and WAF offerings and how they work together. But before we dive into those services, let's first Start with a simple application architecture where you might have some type of compute, data store, or storage. This is just representative of a simplified um, architecture for the you know, purpose of our conversation today. Now, that compute could be an EC2 instance, some type of container, or even a Lambda function if you're familiar with AWS Lambda. Now, a data store could be a relational database like RDS or a non-relational database like DynamoDB. And this is where you're going to track your user information that might be accessing your application or your website. The third component would be some type of storage, like an Amazon S3 bucket, where you are going to store a lot of your static content, such as images, CSS, or JavaScript. Now, one of the things that you recognize with this architecture is that your viewers are accessing your application resources directly. This means that every viewer request is going to hit your origin and increase the workload that your origin has. It also exposes your origin to direct attacks from some malicious actor within the network. And so the recommended best practice within AWS architecture is to incorporate edge services. What this does, it essentially puts together a protective little network or shield around your origin or your AWS architecture by, again, extending your architecture closer to that viewer and incorporating CloudFront's edge locations and its native integration with Shield and WAF as well. When you put edge services around your core architecture, it really enhances the security of your architecture, the scalability of it as well, and again, the optimized uh, performance for applications and web pages as well. Now, we've already talked a little bit about CloudFront at the very beginning, but I do want to dive a little bit deeper into how it works behind the scenes. Some of the additional things we will talk about include how CloudFront works with your content, the unique things that you can do with Lambda at Edge to custom customize your CloudFront response, and some of the security options you have when you're working with CloudFront. I'll then turn the time over to the next presenter to talk a little bit more about WAF and Shield and the offerings that those two services um, have, and how they are integrated very tightly with Amazon CloudFront. So we already mentioned how CloudFront can accelerate your content, but sometimes we don't have visibility into just what the breadth of that content that can be accelerated um, by a CDN is. Uh, for a long time, CDNs have always been thought of as only accelerating static content, such as images or JavaScript, um, or style pages. But today's modern CDNs can do so much more. You can do things with video on demand and live streaming events, and CloudFront supports both RTMP and HTTP streaming. You can also do a lot with dynamic content acceleration for non-cacheable content, like API acceleration, for example. And we'll mention an, an example of that later in the, in the presentation under our case studies as well. And you can do a lot with uh, user inputs, such as put and post, again, reading information into your origins as well. Now, CloudFront is built to be agnostic to the origin that you are using. And what this means is that while we do recommend using S3 or EC2 because of the many benefits that go along with that coupling, you are still free to use your own origin like an on-premise server if that's what you want. Now, CloudFront also allows you to create cache behaviors within your CloudFront distribution 
And what this means is that those cache behaviors act as a different mapping or a path pattern to the origins, meaning that you can further customize your distribution by content type or any other variable that you want. Now, talking about that customizability, CloudFront offers you a lot of control over those distributions and the settings. And there's a lot of great documentation and examples on the internet that likely address any question you may have on the setup or optimization of that distribution. Again, today we're going to be speaking more at a high level. So how do the CDN, uh, you know, like CloudFront work within like an AWS architecture? First and foremost, when a viewer is making a request to your AWS architecture, such as that compute or that storage or that data store, accessing your application is not as straightforward as you would think or as you would hope. It can take many networks to reach that application. And when you realize the path that your viewer request takes, you start to understand that um, the response from the origin to your viewer may actually differ. And what this means is that every hop um, from one network to the other can impact your performance, but can also introduce risk and potentials for malicious actors to come in and intercept that, uh, that communication. And all of this would result in poor performance than is possible. Now, with Edge Services, we remove many of those inefficiencies and we're effectively extending the edge of AWS closer to your end viewer. And with CloudFront and Route 53 being closer to your end viewer, it allows us to get your requests onto the AWS network faster, which utilizes an optimized network to go back to your origin, making it more efficient to get the request and supply the response. Now, the tight integration with Shield and WAF also help mitigate risk as well because those are tightly integrated with CloudFront. Those are also extended further out and closer to your end viewer. And again, allowing you to prevent malicious actors from uh, touching your origin. Lambda at Edge adds intelligence and control to your content delivery. It's like a pocket knife or multi-tool that allows you to customize your CDN response in ways that were never possible before. And all of this adds to just resulting in an improved performance for your application and thus an improved experience for your end viewer. Now, let's talk a little bit about Lambda at Edge. Now, this is a topic that can go very deep, and so we're going to keep it pretty high level. But the idea with Lambda at Edge is it allows you to add uh, unique content delivery functionality to your websites. It means you can uh, personalize your websites and your responses to individual viewers uh, based on variables or header information that comes in. And the way that you do this is that you would identify, like in a first step, um, some type of data uh, state change or request to an endpoint as the trigger point. The second step is that you would write code around that event. And in the third part, any time that event occurs, the Lambda uh, function would execute. And in the fourth stage, AWS would automatically scale up those resources in order to execute that code. Now, with CloudFront, you can execute those codes or those Lambda at Edge functions at four different points. And what that allows you to do is to start to create and modify dynamic content at different points, whether it's on the viewer request or an origin request. It allows you to start to do things for A-B testing to now start to say, well, if one viewer with a header X makes a request, let's supply a response A. And if they have a different um, uh, header information, let's supply them with uh, content B. And so there's a lot of great things you can do with Lambda at Edge, and we have a great uh, blog channel that talks a lot about these uh, various use cases in greater depth and even provide sample code to get you started. Now, one of the things that we, again, wanted to emphasize very strongly is that many people you know, think about uh, content delivery networks as a delivery mechanism, and they're completely right. But what we also want to emphasize is that CloudFront is also a security product in and of its own right. That enhancing your security um, can often come by just adding a CDN in front of your architecture. 
And that's because we have a lot of security features and capabilities natively built into CloudFront that enable you to meet your strict security requirements that you might have uh, for yourself or within your organization as a whole. And we do this in many ways, such as providing access control, such as restricting access to your origins with origin access identity, or providing signed URLs and cookies for private content. Now, you can also encrypt your data in motion or at rest, and we have many of the most advanced uh, protocols and ciphers to do so. And we're always monitoring the regulatory environment to make sure that we are always in line with the highest of compliant standards. And we are a PCI compliant uh, service, as well as a HIPAA compliant. And we also meet compliance standards for many of the ISO standards as well. And this is all well documented on our website as well. Now, as mentioned before, we're also seamlessly integrated with many other AWS services, like AWS Certificate Manager, Shield, and WAP. And we'll dive into those a little bit later. But suffice to say, those help you automatically manage your SSL certificates and also mitigate DDoS attacks as well. Now, with CloudFront, a lot of this um, is provided at a great rate from the standpoint of that are published online and you pay for only the usage that you use. Uh, there's no hidden fees and there's no uh, minimum uh, platform fees as well. CloudFront also offers a free tier where you can get started uh, for 12 months with some free usage and that's well documented on our free tier page as well. But if you have much higher volume of traffic that you'd like to deliver through CloudFront, there's also the opportunity to uh, receive reserved capacity pricing. And that's really tailored to each individual use case. And there's variable terms of how much that commitment might be, but it does provide reduced pricing from the listed rates that are published online. There's also additional ways that you can optimize your costs, such as uh, what's called a price class, which allows you to determine which regions your content is served out of so that you can decide, well, maybe you only want to serve out of some of our low-cost regions versus paying um, for some of the more expensive locations. Now, one of the best cost advantages of using AWS with CloudFront and AWS Certificate Manager is that you have access to a custom SSL certificate for free with Amazon Certificate Manager, and that can be automatically managed and renewed for you uh, with that service. Now, just in short summary, uh, CloudFront, again, offers a lot of performance and scale benefits to your AWS architecture. There's the network acceleration that we had talked about, the regional edge caching layer that increases your cache hit ratio. We also talked a little bit about the puts and posts, about how you can read information into your origin. But there was another service that we didn't mention called S3 Transfer Acceleration. And what that allows you to do is to read information into your S3 bucket in a very quick manner um, than, than going over the general internet itself. We have intelligent uh, controls that allow us to identify what is the edge location that is best for your end viewer so that they always are receiving the fastest ex experience possible. As I mentioned, there's granular uh, cache control, and we're very fast when it comes to uh, you know, invalidating content around the world. And then there's also uh, the dynamic control of having Lambda at Edge offer that serverless compute model uh, at the edge. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hand the time over to our next presenter to talk a little bit more about AWS Shield and WAF. Thanks. Again, my name is Rob Breckenridge. I'm a uh, AWS Edge Services Business Development Manager uh, and here to talk a little bit about our perimeter protection services, specifically AWS WAF, which is our web application firewall, and AWS Shield and Shield Advanced, which are our network and DDoS uh, protection services. So first, there are four pillars that go into making up our perimeter protection approach. So integration, um, we're integrated directly into CloudFront Edge locations, which you heard uh, previously, uh, and our AWS regions across the globe. We're always on, so Shield Standard ensures that all of AWS is available, no matter the size of the attack, so, so AWS services are always available. Um, of course, it's affordable, just like the rest of AWS. You only pay for what you use at a competitive rate, and it's flexible. So you write your own rules and conditions with WAF 
or you can create custom mitigations with our DDoS response team for Shield Advanced. So let's talk a little bit about our journey and how we got here and where we're uh, going after that. So we've actually been protecting AWS and Amazon.com since the beginning of AWS. Uh, we then recently launched uh, WAF, our web application uh, firewall for um, application layer protection in 2015. Um, we then launched Shield Advanced for customers who need a little bit extra support when it comes to network layer and DDoS layer protections. And then finally, in 2017, we re released Shield Advanced for uh, EC2 instances and network uh, load balancers. Uh, that's in particularly helpful for customers with uh, certain types of traffic, like UDP-based game servers. So diving a bit deeper into WAF, uh, first of all, it's on Amazon CloudFront and our application load balancers. Now, it protects you in a number of different ways and allows you to customize those protections to make sure that your application is always up. So, for example, we have things like virtual patching on content management uh, systems like Drupal or WordPress. Um, you can use IP reputation lists from industry groups or ones you provided yourself. We can also protect against SQL injection attacks, um, which are attacks uh, driven towards your, your data-driven applications. And it can stop uh, well-formed application layer uh, DDoS attacks like HTTP floods. Uh, again, bad and good bots can be mitigated or allowed depending on what your application uh, needs. Uh, and all of this is based on proprietary machine learning algorithms, so it actually gets smarter uh, over time. Now, there are about three different components to uh, WAF uh, and, and sort of pillars uh, to how WAF can protect you. So first of all, it's a highly flexible rules engine. So you can create conditions that can roll into rules to inspect any part of a request, like the query string or the body of the request. And these mitigations can actually propagate in less than one minute and sometimes much faster to ensure that once you're under attack, uh, you can stop that attack quickly. Moving up, uh, we even have pre-configured protections uh, that help you get started in a really simple way. So we've made some CloudFormation templates to help you uh, launch things like uh, a threat list against uh, a threat protection against the OWASP top 10, which is an industry list of top 10 most critical application uh, security risks. Then we have security automations for anomaly-based protections. So you can use some of our machine learning services to parse through a complete set of WAF logs to detect anomalies and automatically update the web access control lists or web ACLs with a service like AWS Lambda. And then finally, we even have partner managed rules that allow you to get started in a really simple manner, often one or two clicks. So you can go to the WAF rules marketplace uh, and find these rules, which are created by leading WAF industry companies like Fortinet, Imperva, Trend Micro, Alert Logic, et cetera. And they have rules for things like the OWASP top 10, bad bots, IP reputation lists, or content management system uh, patching. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Shield Standard versus Shield Advanced. So again, Shield Standard was created to ensure that no AWS service goes down uh, and no service in general goes down. Shield Advanced, on the other hand, helps customers ensure that their particular applications within that service don't go down due to a DDoS attack. So the primary components of protection for Shield Advanced are our DDoS expertise, visibility and compliance, and economic protections and benefits that you'll have access to. So let's talk a little bit first about the DDoS expertise. So first, with detection, you can baseline traffic against resources so we know what's normal and what's not when it comes to your traffic. Then you can set granular thresholds so we can bring in some of the mitigations sooner than we would otherwise, depending on your application traffic sensitivity. Then once we bring in those mitigations, uh, we'll filter out only the worst packets so we ensure that no, you don't experience any false positives. We'll also engineer traffic across our network if needed so that your application can stay up and move that, uh, move that traffic around um, where necessary. Then with our DDoS response team, uh, they can help you create custom mitigations based on your expected traffic patterns. Um, they'll ensure your architecture is DDoS resilient. Uh, they'll get engaged if and when an attack uh, occurs and tries to bring you down. They'll actually hop on the phone, or you can proactively engage them uh, if you're under attack via a number of different vehicles, uh, like Lambda buttons, uh, Lambda or IoT buttons with a Lambda connected to it that can actually cut a ticket directly to the DDoS response team. 
So diving into the visibility and compliance side of things, um, we actually have 15 different CloudWatch metrics uh, to allow you to monitor your application vulnerability, and those can actually be set uh, to trigger alarms so that you can engage your security response team when you're under attack. You also have diagnostic reports to allow you to understand what happened after an attack and triage your fixes accordingly, uh, and then allow you to report on those fixes, uh, excuse me, report on those attacks and report on that for co compliance purposes. Then there's the global threat uh, reporting dashboard. You can even use this to check out uh, what AWS sees and what we're detecting across our entire network, and then allow you to set up mitigations and to set up a better posture to ensure that you have a, a, a proper security posture uh, in case of a particular launch that you might have. So diving into some of the economic benefits, uh, AWS WAF actually comes at no additional cost with Shield Advanced. AWS Firewall Manager comes at no additional cost as well. Now, we haven't talked about this, but in general, uh, Firewall Manager is a service that helps you manage WAF and your web access control list across various accounts and across your entire organization for simple management from uh, one, one centralized location. Then there's actually cost protections for scaling. So if you scale up uh, your architecture due to a DDoS attack, we'll actually credit you back the cost of scaling. So that, in general, are some of our perimeter protection services and how you can stay safe with uh, your content uh, and stay safe with your application by using these, edge, using these services at the edge and in line. Thank you. Now, I'd like to go back and take a look at the case studies and retouch on some of the examples that are provided through CloudFront, Shield, and WAF. The first that I'd like to point out is the dynamic content delivery uh, from Supercell. And we have a little uh, uh, example about this on some of our case studies that are provided on the CloudFront webpage. But it goes into depth to show how Supercell is not only using CloudFront for the static content uh, delivery, but also that dynamic content delivery. Another example of dynamic content delivery comes uh, through secure API acceleration with Slack. On our case study and our, also our Getting Started webpage for CloudFront, there's a video that talks about um, how Slack uses CloudFront for that API acceleration. And they go into some great depth and provide some great uh, insights from their engineering team uh, who is uh, presenting that session. And then lastly, the thing I'd like to draw attention to is that we have a wide number of individual developers and small businesses that use CMS sites for uh, whether it's an individual blog or some type of small business. But here again, CloudFront can really help with the acceleration and protection of a CMS site, whether it is WordPress or Drupal. Now, in closing, we'd like to just re-review some of the key takeaways and benefits of Edge services. And uh, I'll keep this you know, pretty short and high level that really the benefits that we really wanted to emphasize today was the increased performance and also the enhanced security that you can receive, again, when you put edge services uh, as that tight application boundary around your origin, uh, that compute, that data store, and that storage element. Again, we wanted to say thank you for joining us in this webinar today. We have several uh, landing pages for each of these services. Uh, we call out CloudFront here because it's a great place to get started. There's a lot of resources there uh, to uh, educate yourself a little bit more with more videos or white papers or blogs and the uh, little uh, getting started projects as well. Again, thank you for joining us uh, in today's webinar. We'll go ahead and uh, look at uh, uh, the chat and we'll go into some questions and answers here.